we are taking now the problem of uncoupled inside cylinder locomotive now the problem given is there is a uncoupled inside cylinder locomotive r have r at right angles and 325 mm long the cylinders are 675 mm apart the rotating mass per cylinder is 200 kg at the crank pin and the mass of reciprocating parts of cylinder is 240 kg the the wheel center line are 1.5 meter apart the whole of the rotating and two third of the reciprocating masses are to be balanced and the balance mass are to be placed in the plane of rotating driving wheel at a radius of 800 mm we are required to determine the balancing masses hammer below variation in the tractive force and maximum swing couple when the speed of engine is 240 rpm so we have done it how we will do we'll calculate first the value of omega omega is 2 pi n by 60 n is given to us so we can determine n is 240 so we can determine omega is 80 pi now total mass what is required to be balanced is the first thing what we should calculate so it is written that we are supposed to balance complete of the rotating and two third of the reciprocating so this is the rotating mass and this is reciprocating so total mass to be balanced is 200 plus 2 by third of 240 that is 360 that is per cylinder so now if we'll, we'll go with the graphical method so we have shown here this is x and y is are the location of two wheels which are 1.5 meter apart there are two cylinders inside cylinders the distance between them is also given so we have we have plotted it now if we'll see the positions angular positions so cylinder a and cylinder b they are at 90 degree it is given in the problem already they are at 90 degree they are at right angles even if that is not given in the locomotive we should take they are at 90 degree now how to proceed as we were doing in the dynamic balancing graphical method the same method we can adopt we'll make the table first plane so there are four planes x plane a b and y x a b and y we have taken x as a reference plane now we we are supposed to determine mx the radial distance is 0.8 that is it is given here the driving wheel at the radius of 800 is required to balance so r is 0.8 so we have calculated mr l is 0 that is distance of x plane x plane to x is 0 so mr l is 0 for plane a the mass to be balanced is 360 radial distance is it is 325 so that is was 0.325 you multiply it will get 117 now the distance of l that is l of a from x that is 412.5 that will become 0.4125 in meters we'll calculate mrl similarly for b we'll see the distance calculate the distance and then again mr and l l is this distance so this is 1.0875 mrl we have calculated my at y plane uh, balancing mass at radial distance 0.8 we have calculated mr l distance is here to here is 1.5 so mrl we have calculated now we will do first we'll make the couple polygon out of this column then we'll make the force polygon to determine the value of mx and my so we'll make this to determine my so this is how we have done 48.26 is along a so 48.26 is at 0 degree then 127.28 is along b that is like this now there were three sides because it is making a closed it should make a closed polygon so we have closed it we have joined the last point to the first point that is we can measure it 1.2 my we can measure it and we can convert it to the equivalent scale and we will we can determine the value of my is going to be 113.43 similarly when we'll make the diagram for this mr 
force diagram so we'll draw first 117 that is along a so this is along this 117 then along b this is along this so this is where this is closing we are taking 117 then we have calculated my so we can calculate 0.8 into my we will draw it parallel to this we will draw it here then we'll join the last point to the initial point to determine 0.8 mx so we'll just we'll join it measure it and we'll determine the value of mx is going to be again 113.43 so this is how can we determine the values of the balancing mass that is part 1 of this question has been solved now we'll try to see how to determine hammer blow variation in tractive force and maximum swing couples for the given speed so let us see it now to calculate hammer blow hammer blow we are the formula for hammer blow is m r omega square here m is the mass which is required to balance on the reciprocating portion of the mass so in the first portion in the first sheet we have seen that to balance 360 kg we required 113.43 mass at the wheel so now if that is if there is 360 mass is required to be balanced we are putting 113.43 as a balancing mass now the reciprocating mass out of uh, 360 is 2/3 of 240 that is 2/3 of 240 what is required to balance it is by unitary method for 360 this much is required for 1 it is required 11343 by 360 for this 113.43 by 360 into 160 so this will give us 50.43 so 50.43 is the mass of 11343 which is required to balance the reciprocating mass only so only the particular mass is to be taken as m to determine hammer blow so we can now determine the value of hammer blow hammer blow is plus minus m r is where we are putting the mass that is 0.8 omega square so mr omega square will come like this this is the value 2547 3.37 now to determine the tractive force the formula is plus minus root 2 1 minus c mr omega square here the value of c is 2 by 3 that is what is the portion of reciprocating mass we are balancing m is the total reciprocating mass that is 240 r is the distance that is 0.325 and omega is 8 pi so we have put in here and we can determine the value of this as tractive force is 23225.6 swing couple can be determined by this formula 1 upon root 2 bracket 1 minus c mr r omega square l here again c is 2 by 3 mr is total reciprocating mass r is 0.325 omega is 8 pi the value of l is that is the distance between the cylinders because swing couple is developed along the cylinders axis so the distance between the cylinder is to be taken as the value of l that is we have taken it here so we can determine the swing couple is 7838.6 newton meter so in the coupled locomotive in the in the um, in the uncoupled locomotive we we can determine hammer blow tractive force and swing couple by this manner and to it is to remember that swing hammer blow can be determined by using unitary method to determine the value of m so this is how we can solve the problem of uncoupled locomotive and we will be picking up the next problem for coupled locomotive which will be having two more planes so we'll see it in the next uh, lecture thank you